Welcome to the swing sets. Climb on up. There is always a swing available. On Life on the Swing Set, the podcast, we explore ethically non-monogamous relationships, the pleasures and passions, the promise and pitfalls. We discuss all aspects of ethical non-monogamy in a fun, open, and welcoming fashion with a gleam in our eye, a bounce in our step, our hands down your pants. Ooh, (laughs) sorry, got ahead of myself. We may be biased. In fact, we most certainly are. But we don't sugarcoat and each of us speaks honestly and earnestly about our thoughts, ideas, and experiences throughout our very own Lives on the Swing set. Thanks for swinging by. The last few months on the swing set, it has seemed like life has thrown everything it could at us. And to varying degrees, we've needed some breaks. Dylan is off hunting Mastodon in the Dakotas at the moment. And before you get all up in arms about the hunting part, I'll remind you that Mastodon have been extinct for about 11,000 years. Tonight, we decided to set the table for two. Just Ginger and I and do a mailbag episode. I'm Cooper Beckett, and tonight I have the lovely Ginger with me. Yes, you do. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. I like it. This is fun. It is. Mixing it, it is. up. And and uh, I did ask Twitter if uh, two people can actually gangbang something, mm-hmm. like the mailbag. Sure. And they agreed that if anyone could do it, the two of us could. Sure. Does it yeah. does it help that I'm wearing two cocks? Well, that definitely helps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I can Good. wear the the ride along one, you know, with with one on top or one on the bottom. We totally would yeah. kill it. Absolutely, we can do 100%. this. One hundred percent. We can do We've this got without this. question. And if We've you put totally one on this. each of your uh, thighs, then you could kneel above the 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 now personified mailbag. Uh, wow. So she could get, you know, both hands around your, your thigh cocks. Thigh cocks. Thigh cocks. Your thighs are that. amazing, Jen. So <laughs> giving them cocks. Oh, I'm, I'm willing to bet there is a, a large section of our, our listening audience who is now having very vivid and debauched fantasies of you with two, I'm going to say bright sp- Purple thigh cocks. Hashtag like thigh cocks. Yeah. Hashtag thigh cocks. Absolutely. And speaking of hashtag, uh, tweet along as you listen to our episode with the hashtag SS podcast. And you can find Ginger and me uh, on Twitter at Cooper S. Beckett and at Ginger and the Prof. And if you want to tweet at Mastodon Hunter Dylan Thomas, is <laughs> at Dylan the Thomas. And if you like what we're doing here and want to join our private online community, and it's not private because we want to be exclusive, it's private so we can help maintain a sense of uh, less asshole-ness. I said asshole, didn't I? Less you did. asshole-ness you... than the rest of the internet. Um, so it is, it is invite only. But Patreons... People who uh, sign up to throw us a buck or five every time we release an episode, they get to uh, join the community early and help us build this out. It's the brainchild of Dylan Thomas when he's not Mastodon hunting. And uh, it's really uh, a very amazing community. And you can do that at lifeontheswingset.com slash support. Now, Jen, have you gone to your happy place with the thigh cocks? Have you figured out your logistics? Yes, I'm. I, there are so many logistics, and there's so much awesomeness that <laughs> I just I'm. Oh, I'm having super naughty fantasies of very like. Um, <laughs> See, I'm feeling like your very, muscle very... flexing alone <laughs> would be a, a significant enough thrust. What I'm saying is, I want to sit on your thigh, Jen. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, I, I feel like it's it's got the potential for some sort of desire costume. I think so option. too. It's it's uh, well, Dylan Dylan once promised to be Cthulhu. Yes, and and he never followed through. So you know what? You could say, you know what? Fuck that! Uh-huh. I am Cthulhu. I could. You could. I could. I'm I'm totally. <laughs> 
thinking this through for yeah. November without question. So speaking of November and our desire trip, did you know we're, we've already booked more rooms than we did for our entire trip last year? I know. Isn't that wild? And that, that trip sold out in July. Right. So we are already past that. We've already got 80 couples coming with us. And the resort only has 111 rooms. And you know what? I'm going to sleep somewhere. So <laughs> that means we we literally, we have less than 30 rooms left at this point. And it's, yeah. it's crazy. So and you just came back from Desire. We did. We did. Prof and I had an amazing time. JV and Shara were there as well. We hosted an intimate group of couples and the resort looks fantastic. Mm. They hosted us beautifully. All of the usual suspects were there doing, you know, you making tell their magic. Luis and- that I miss him? I, oh, think, I, I think on I- him often. Yes. I, I passed along all of, all of, <laughs> all the- of the love. All of the love, all of the messages. I found it amusing that the the dearest love staff always, you know, come to me and say the the way they pronounce ginger is amazing. They say ginger, ginger. and they're like, "You're on vacation this time. The next time is the work trip." And I'm like, "Wow, if this is work, <laughs> I want to work all the time." Yeah, I agree. So, I agree. yeah. So it was very sweet. And like I said, the resort looks great. We had a fantastic time. Uh, sexy as always. It's always great mm. to see JV and Shara. They're just, just fantastic to spend time with. The couples that we spent time with that for whatever reason couldn't make it in November were excited to get a little taste of the swing set. And I'll leave oh, that I, for you to I interpret. I have a secret, uh, for, for the, uh, for you. Okay. And, and apparently our listeners. Okay. And uh, apparently everyone who's listening. So yes. I met one of the lovely couples that were with you mm-hmm. in Desire. And mm-hmm. I had one of those terribly Cooper Beckett moments where <laughs> I spent most of the time I was talking to her, uh, wanting to ask to kiss her. Uh huh. And then, you know, immediately after we had parted ways, uh, tweeted, direct messaged, her telling her that okay and she felt the same way so see again we learned the lesson that life is short so ask the people you want to make out with to make out with you yes yes so you know what i love about that so so is part of the secret you did or didn't get to make out yet i didn't get to make out yet no okay not yet not yet Okay. Not yet, but but someday I I hope to someday. Okay, but uh, not yet. Well, interestingly enough, if <laughs> perhaps we might be thinking about the same couple. Oh, did you make out with with her? Maybe. Eh? Well, you can pass it along the transitive property. A uh, kind of sorta. There were there were, there was a kiss. There was lovely <laughs> times, but one of my favorite moments was when. Again, I think we're talking about the same sexy folks. We were holding court, of mm, course, in of course. the end of the hot tub that one, you know, the the hot end of the hot tub, as one does. <laughs> the and tip of the bean. Ex- yeah. So there you go. Uh, gathering all of the sexy people, telling them about the trip. And, and of course, folks who've traveled with us before were even doing the job of selling the trip and truth be told, and I don't mean selling the trip. I mean like you need to come with these guys because it's so much fun. So not Um, like short sleeves and a tie in a small beige room selling the trip. No, exactly. Exactly. They didn't, they didn't have like swing set polos on or anything (laughs) like that in the hot tub. Exactly. With a clipboard or something, but they were just like, it, it was a hoot because there was another couple who has never managed to travel with swing set. Mm-hmm. But they've heard enough about the trip over the years that they can't wait to travel with us in 2017 <laughs> because they have to take a certain week in October and travel because of other commitments. But they're already gotcha. planning for 2017 to be there when we are there because they always miss us, whether it's in April or November. They always miss us by just a week. Well, that, um, that clearly means we need to plan 2017. I know. Right? I mean, we're already, already there. But yeah. I segue back to the makeout conversation yes. that we were just having. So 
one of those lovely sexies, I, one of my favorite moments of the trip was sitting in the hot tub and he was outside of the hot tub and we ha- were all having conversations about various things. And he leaned in and said, I don't want to miss the opportunity to ask you if, if it's okay, if we make out. And I was like, Oh my gosh, sexiest question. Like that, that is. but it, hands down, ask the question, like, do it because it always is fantastic. <laughs> that it was sounds awesome. lovely. It was. So it if, was. if listeners want to come with us in November, and seriously, we are not, this is not sales pitchy, Mm-mm. but we will sell out and you will regret it if you want to come with and you miss it. That's it. So if you want to, I mean, if you're like seriously on board, go to ssdesire.com and there's all sorts of information there and you can put down your deposit because we hate really really it makes me it makes me really sad to tell people that we're sold out as as exciting as it is that we're sold out it makes me really sad so exactly and and in past years we've had a little wiggle room in the mm-hmm. sense that we, you know, a couple rooms here or there, maybe because, you know, there were other rooms to be had. Right. Not this case, not the case this year. There will be no gonna, extra rooms at the no There's no extra rooms. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's not going to be any couch surfing. There's like, there are rooms and then once they're sold out, they're gone. And yeah. so it's going to be awesome. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait either. It's going to be outstanding. Yeah. <sighs> so you want right, to do so some mail bagging? Yeah, gang I was going to say, we, we got a mail bag, <laughs> mail bagging, <laughs> yeah, something of the sort. We're going to make it into a verb, whether it likes it or not. So We're going to bag some yes. mail right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll read the first question, Jen. Sounds great. I have been by for a while and have expressed my curiosities to my wife. When we have talked, she has said that she doesn't want to see me and another guy together. At other times, she has said she wasn't sure she wanted to see that, but she would leave the room and let me and the other guy do our thing. I'd love to have an MMF with a bi guy, but I'm scared to say anything to her. I love my wife, but I'd also like to be able to hook up with the guy without her freaking out. Any ideas or suggestions? It's a really great question. It is. And I have a, I have a couple of thoughts. The first one is... In terms of the ideas or suggestions for this listener, I would say having a conversation with her about what about it makes her uncomfortable. Because I feel like there are two two camps here. One is she's uncomfortable because it's new. Mm -hmm. She's uncomfortable because of her own internalized biphobia, maybe. She's uncomfortable because... She's not sure how she'll react, so she doesn't want to mess with his fun. Um, so there, there are certain reasons she might be uncomfortable that can be handled, so to speak. Right. That you can, you can plan for it. You can plan for that discomfort and see or, you know, what, what you might do in the case of feeling that way. And then I feel like there's uncomfortable in the sense of, I just, this is not something I want to see. This is not sexy for me. This changes sure. the way that I feel about how I view my partner. So it's almost like there's this other camp of feelings that may be less um, handleable. I don't know. I'm making up a word here, but you see what I mean? Well, yeah, there is a certain uh, level of discomfort that you can manage and sort of work through. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, I I think you hit the nail on the head. It's the biphobia, but it's also the societal stigma that surrounds um, men and guy play. Because, you know, we've all been brought up to think that there is no bi male. It's all a road to gay. And if you have any lingering effects of that, it would be very easy for that to just sittle in your sittle. There's, there's a word for you in your subconscious and take over and feel like, uh, you don't even know why you're uncomfortable, but you are. So, I mean, the number one thing is, um, the being scared to say anything to his wife, yeah. I totally get it 100%. I've been there. I'm 
I'm frequently there. But nothing ever has been solved by being afraid to talk about it. Right. Well, you can be afraid, but you still have to bring well, it up. Yeah, true. Nothing, nothing ever has been solved by not talking about it. Exactly. And so I think you, you've, you've started the conversation. And from the way this email was written, it sounds like you brought it up once and had a negative reaction. Maybe you brought it up a few months later and had a neutral reaction. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think – I mean, if she's okay with, with letting you do your thing with a guy – that's worth exploring and you should you should see that as acceptance of you mm -hmm. because she may not want the two guy thing because the two guy thing two guys and a girl can also be from societal stigma two guys railing on a girl right and maybe she's not interested in that maybe she doesn't want to be the the stereotypical spit roast you know there right right and that also could be causing the feelings up but as a guy who's had one-on-one -on -one guy experiences and has not enjoyed them because i haven't had a good one-on-one -on -one guy experience mm -hmm. maybe that's not what you're looking for you know, maybe it is just about uh, doing this with your wife. I can tell you that I'm always more uh, interested in guy play when there's a girl there. So, sure, there's a lot of moving and parts here. There are a lot of moving parts, and I feel like you're describing a, a facet of this coop that I that may come into play for this couple in the sense that. So you are not into playing with a guy by yourself or, you know, mm -hmm. guy, just, just the two of you. It's just not something you're into. Right. And so that's okay. Like there's a lot of other layers of that, that we could say, oh, it's this, it's that, it's, you know, blah, 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 whatever. It doesn't have to be bigger than just, hey, it doesn't turn me on. So I feel like I go back to her concerns if it's something that she's just not into, I mean, I, I describe it this way. So you bring something up to your partner to say, hey, I want to try this thing. And if they're neutral or positive, you go for it. But if it's a negative for them, then obviously that you're not going to go in that direction. So right. if she's feeling like this doesn't turn me on, it's not sexy for me, there's the idea of trying to talk her into it isn't going to get you anywhere. But if, she, if her concerns are, you know, in that other camp that I described where it's like, she's just not sure it, she's not sure how she'll react. She maybe doesn't want to have the, um, MMF. Maybe she, who knows what, um, I, I feel like it comes down to in that case, knowing the difference between, this is something that there's movement on or this is something that there's just not going to be movement on it. And so he needs to seek permission in another way or it's just off the table in the sense that he could either hook up with someone by himself or maybe another MMF with a couple or, um, you know, get creative with a solution or maybe it's just, like I said, off the table. Right. So I just feel like assessing where she is and what her objections are and what her concerns are is the important piece of moving forward. And you always, always need to get yourself to the default of talking about it. Yeah. And if you're, if you're nervous about bringing it up, I'm, I'm going to recommend the thing that Dan Savage always recommends. Put this episode on your, on your wife's phone, cue it up to your question and hand it to her. Hmm. And that'll start a discussion. Jin, we have another question about being bi, this time from we the do. other perspective. Would you like to read Here. it? I would. Here we go. I've been bi ever since I can remember, but because you were either gay or straight, I felt I had to choose one. I pushed down my feelings about women and have had a very good life. I married a very supportive man 15 years ago, and we have, in the past few years, talked about me being bi. The problem is that I have no outlet for this. 
We tried to be swingers a year ago and it crashed and burned. My husband was very game at the time, but I think it was because we knew the couple. Now he says he has no interest in it. He is more into kink than any kind of swinging, and I was into both, but now I feel that I'm moving away from kink and more into wanting to try swing clubs. So because of this, I feel left out and longing, like there's a hole in me somewhere, but I don't know what to do. It's a rough one-two punch with the buy stuff, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. It, what's funny is this this really hits at the heart of growth as a person because, you know, you may be interested in something or think you're interested in something and then experience a shift that maybe you can't even fully explain to yourself, let alone your partner. And to me, it seems like this, it crashed and burned part yeah. says a lot more than, than we're getting from this email. Yeah. And I think, I think a good discussion with your husband of what it was that didn't work for him about the situation and sort of not letting the conversation be shut down with just, I have no interest. I think that would be very valuable. Also, if he's interested in kink and wanting to explore kink, I don't know if he wants to explore it outside your relationship or within, then I think it might give you a good opportunity to both explore your own things separately. What do you think, Jen? Yeah, I I mean, there's... I'm like, oh, like it, it, it is oh, I know. a tough... It's tough. And I feel like it's about doing your best to make progress and together. And I love your point. Like, let's, let's assess what's going on here. Let's figure out where we can have some movement in this arrangement. And I feel like it's important to I always say embrace the and like all mm -hmm. of this can be on the table in some way, shape or form. I feel like one of the just, just where my heart is really when I read this is, you know, being by doesn't go away. Right. And so when you're in a position of having had a relationship or being in a relationship that has been experimental to, to ethical non-monogamy with swinging and with kink. And then it goes away, you know, the, the being bisexual doesn't go away. And so there needs to be a sensitive handling of, well, what do I do with this part of me now? And it reminds right. me of when, um, the reason Prof and I got started in ethical non-monogamy and opening up our relationship was because his acknowledgement of me being bisexual was a very serious acknowledgement that he was overly deferential to me to say, this is a part of you and your sexuality that I cannot serve. And Therefore, what are we going to do about this? And so there's an element of this that I feel like her partner, her husband needs to wrap his mind around that. Yeah. A, a true acknowledgement that this is a part of her sexuality that she is interested in uh, enjoying and basically we need to figure out what this looks like moving forward. And I agree with what you had said about the crashed and burned. Mm -hmm. We've said before lots of times, especially on the, um, the newbie episodes, the one on one episodes that, you know, if you crash and burn, figure it out, right? You know, do, do the Monday morning quarterbacking, figure out why it didn't work and what did work. And perhaps, you know, go for it again and see what happens. And I feel like just simply 
her denying her bisexuality in practice is not a sustainable solution. Right. And it can very easily lead to resentment for being made. I'm using air quotes in the best podcast fashion, being right. made to suppress your bisexuality. So it's, it's, uh, I, I think the, the real answer for both of our first two listeners is you need to have long and, and comprehensive talks and they don't have to seem so scary uh, when you acknowledge that you're probably not going to get a solution out of them within the first hour of your conversation. So this mm -hmm. is ongoing discussions of, especially if you feel this is who you are. It's not just a thing you want to try. It's who you mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who has repressed my bisexuality, it is who I am. And it came out. And it, it's it's just not something you can hide from. And, and because of that, because you can't hide from it, unfortunately, your partner cannot either. Right. So it, it's just something that has to be discussed. Well said. Let's take a break, Jen, and we, we can come back with more listener questions. Sounds like fun. When it comes to online dating, we here at The Swing Set believe that Cassidy is the best one out there. It looks great, it's intuitive and easy to use, and it's simply full of potential sexy friends. Still the fastest growing online swinger dating site in the world, Cassidy has been our go-to site for the last three years. If you sign up using our link at lifeontheswingset.com slash K-A-S-I-D-I-E, you'll get some free time to explore the site. And you can decide for yourself if Cassidy is the site for you. Hope to see you there at Cassidy.com. We at The Swing Set believe that being risk-aware and practicing safer sex makes our lifestyle exponentially better. With that in mind, we're partnering with Lucky Bloke, global condom experts, and the best online source for condoms and lube to say no to mediocre condoms and bring the most pleasurable, safer sex directly to our listeners. Go to swingsetcondoms.com to see a specially curated selection of condoms, lubes, and assortments to reintroduce variety and excitement into the protection portion of your playtime. You should especially take note of the deluxe sampler put together by us at the Swing Set for your party and date night kit. Making your condom purchase here supports both us at the Swing Set and the wonderful purveyors of safer sex, the Lucky Bloke. Swingsetcondoms.com Welcome back to Life on the Swing Set, the podcast. Tonight, Ginger and I are doing a one-two punch on gang-banging the mailbag. That's very violent. I shouldn't have gone there. Very, very violent. <laughs> well, if it's consensual, it can be really sexy. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. We've had Pepper on here who talks about the punching. That's true. Okay. Way to, way to solve that, Gin. <laughs> well, I started to daydream and fantasize for a second. <laughs> I've got the next question here, and I need to I, – I don't usually put the email subject lines right. in the question, but this one was – this one this was just – It's relevant. It's I, germane. I can't not. So the right. subject of the email was, I can't fucking stand this guy. So with a, with a title like that. Here we go. My wife and I have played with non-monogamy on and off for three years now. We had taken a break, you could say, after I found out she had been seeing a friend of ours for a year and a half behind my back. She has known this guy for longer than we had been together and has always had feelings for him. Now that we're talking about getting back into the lifestyle, she says that she still has feelings for him and that she is not sure what will happen, but would like the opportunity to find out. I can't fucking stand this guy. She does know how I feel about this guy, that I cannot stand him, and yet she still wants to see if there's anything there. I told her that I love her very much, and I want her to experience everything in life she wants to. No, I do not agree with it, but I did tell her that she can do whatever she wants. What are your thoughts and feelings about this, and am I going about it correctly? I think he, should, he, gets, an, he gets an A for trying. Yeah. I don't know that I can get behind the, no, I do not agree with it, but I did tell her she can do whatever she wants sentence because that doesn't feel sustainable to me. Well, there's a couple of points just from a deconstructing the logic standpoint that I'd like to just note. The first one is 
the fact that the whole thing starts with infidelity, Mm -hmm. that it was behind his back. So that it's, it's hard for me to even get past hearing that. And that's that that an instant red flag for you. Well, it is. I mean, it's, it's for me, it's an instant red flag in the sense that he says, my wife and I have played with non-monogamy off and on for three years and she's been seeing this person behind his back for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. I always go, I, I kind of channel the Dan Savage attitude. I'm like, really? You're, you're non-monogamous and you're cheating? What the fuck are you doing? Okay. So you get to have your cake and eat it too. And, and at the same time, you're, you're being dishonest. Right. That's just, that sucks. And so I feel like, I just start there where I'm like, okay, so that in and of itself sucks because if you have already negotiated being non-monogamous in some way, shape or form, then you can have the conversation to say, there's this person that I have had a connection with and I would like to play with this person. And so you, you, you get consent from your partner to do those things. And if your partner says no, then you maintain the integrity of your relationship by not doing that. So in and of itself, it's hard for me to see past that. But then I go to the next piece where if that wasn't a factor, if it was this, this guy and it was all above board, all kinds of consent and permission was given and the partner can't stand this guy, you know, can't fucking stand this guy. I go to the question of, well, why? Like, is he just, is, is he, are, are you jealous? Is he a smarmy guy? Is he an asshole? Does he treat her badly? Like, what's the reason you can't fucking stand this guy? And maybe it's as simple as she was cheating with him. So Mm -hmm. there's a lot of baggage, which I would completely understand. And so, that brings me around to the point that you made, Coop, around, you know, I don't agree with it, but I told her she could do whatever she wants. Right. I mean, that is a no-win play right there. Right. Unless you can truly be completely disinvested and hands off the wheel and give her full permission to do whatever she wants – you, you, it's not going to work. It's not going to be sustainable. You're just going to, you know, go into the space of starting to rack up the resentment points and that doesn't get anyone anywhere. Which will come tumbling out every time you have any type of disagreement too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's tough because, you know, I look at that, that last paragraph and I mean, I have not been in this specific situation. But I know the feeling that you can lay down the law, so to speak, like we are not doing this anymore. And that's a very dangerous card to play. It's like the uh, I may quit card at work. Mm -hmm. Because you can really only play that once before it becomes meaningless. Mm -hmm. And... When you play that card, it forces your partner to make a very difficult choice. It's like you have to choose between me or him. I've always been of the opinion that if someone says that to you, you should probably choose the person that's not making you choose. You know, hmm. mm-hmm. it's a, it's a really, uh, I mean, I think, I think your best method here is to really make it clear you don't want to risk saying things you don't like about him that she likes. You want to make it about you. This is, this is my feelings were hurt because of this happening, this happening, this happening. And I feel that, uh, I will be left behind if this, this, and this, because if you make it about him, she'll get really defensive. Very likely. I think. Well, and, and, your your assessment of all of that, Coop, I feel like it really comes down to, as I reflect on my experience ever in having an open relationship, I have 
always had, and I don't say always lightly, I've always had to have at least a cordial relationship with Prof's partners. Like polite and cordial. And it's usually been lots better than that. But I'm just saying, like, if this is, if this is a person that you can't even, you know, you can't fucking stand and the reasons could be vast given what he's shared, then that in and of itself feels like it's never really going to work. And I, 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 I feel like, you know, taking it to that very simplistic level of, you know, unless you're willing to wade through the infidelity piece, unless you're willing to wade through your own need to understand where your partner's coming from, unless you're willing to wade through why you can't fucking stand this guy, then there's a lot stacked against you to make this work in a way that's healthy for everyone. Yeah, that's a tough situation. But make it about you, your feelings, and you will get a lot farther. Absolutely. Jen, you want to read the next one? My husband and I found this lifestyle accidentally after patching up our marriage from a life-changing event involving lying, cheating, and affairs. It has taken us three long years only to have giggled our way through three couples. We believe we lean towards polyamorous. How do we search but not search with an agenda but without an agenda for that stable couple looking for the same? (laughs) <laughs> we want to travel with that smart, worldly, married couple. And she signed it, Jacqueline. I think this is, this is a, first of all, this is a lovely question. It is. Because it, it has all of the, the glorious exploratory earmarks of embarking into non-monogamy that I love. Yes, yes. And what's, I mean, here's the thing. You can't not have an agenda if you have an agenda. <laughs> you just, you are not able to do that. So therefore, my my initial advice would be to try not to have an agenda. Because that's about <laughs> you. You can You can work to change that. I can tell you that in the years that I've been doing this, I have met some of the most wonderful people I, I, I've ever, I mean, just people I want to spend oodles of time with. And it ebbs and flows. Uh, just this year, Ophelia and I met several couples that are just wonderful to be around. And you know when you find that? When you stop looking for it. Oh my God, I'm so cliche. I love that you notice the same energy that I did, that these folks are in that phase of really, you know, the wondrous phase of, oh my goodness, this is so fun. And we've giggled our way through three couples. That's so, (laughs) so real. Don't you want to just hang out with them? Totally. They should come to desire. Yes. Oh my gosh, totally. And we'll talk Polly. Where else would you meet couples to vacation with than on a vacation resort? Okay. Sorry. (laughs) Well, I I have to giggle first and foremost with them about this whole, like you said, agenda, non-agenda, and noticing in their experience that they lean toward polyamorous. Just just being able to notice how you roll is an awesome awareness to have. And I also want to give them serious kudos for finding the lifestyle accidentally after moving mm-hmm. through uh, infidelity. Because what that says to me is they are in love and they are willing to reinvent things and have a relationship design that works for them even after having to repair that kind of experience. And that takes a lot of work. So I'd love to, you know, like I said, pass along the kudos and say, Hey, good job. Like, that's awesome that you are still able to enjoy each other and still able to find your way through conversations that bring you to the place of feeling like, Hey, we lean toward polyamorous. So that's, that's 
speaks to a lot of really good stuff. What I would ultimately say about finding that stable couple or couples or whatever that looks like, Prof and I have found our way after years and years and years and years into a very poly relationship with the lovely Eli. And yes. what I would say is, again, to to reinforce the cliching of your cliche, Coop, <laughs> uh, you just, it happens when it happens. I mean, you can't plan for that. All you can do is really be your authentic self, show up at places that allow you the opportunity to get to know awesome people and, and put it out there. Yeah. And I feel like it's... Don't a, say on the first date that we're looking to go on vacation with couples. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, this starts to sound like pretty typical dating advice, it, it, doesn't it? It is very dating-y. So you don't want to be the couple that freaks other couples out by saying, oh, we want to spend all our time together and go... And because they might want that too, but they don't want to hear that until they've gotten to know you. You know? Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. It's tough. And it, <laughs> it is. It's tough, but... You know, this, uh, if we're going <laughs> to, I'm going to add on another cliche. Oh, excellent. Enjoy the journey. <laughs> and I say that n not really meant to be tongue in cheek, like l legitimately enjoy the journey. Yeah. That you're going to meet some people who hit the mark, who are that smart, worldly married couple that you want to spend time with. You're going to meet some folks that are going to be just wild and crazy fun. You can play or not play with any of those people. It's not about that. What I, what I'd love to put out there though is the more, you're out there, the more you're meeting people, the more likely you are to find those folks. Yeah. And so not letting every single couple you meet that's not those people ruin your time. It's like, you know what? Take what comes, have a good time on the journey. And I can honestly say, I mean, I'm in awe of the fact that we randomly stumbled across meeting Eli in the wild as a completely vanilla single human being. <laughs> and we're now in a pretty intense poly relationship together yeah. that, that it's certainly something Prof and I have always felt would be right for us, but Although I would say we had the vision, we didn't have an agenda. We didn't sit down to dinner with every single, every single, single woman <laughs> and say, so we're hoping X, Y, and Z. Like we just enjoyed the journey. And then all of a sudden we met Eli. And so there's, a, it's a, it's a good way to have fun along the way to you just know, and it's, go out it's and funny. Party. We, um, uh, Ophelia and I are are sort of seeing uh, a girl, and she's the uh, she's the missus of a couple we met as at a swinger party, and we're sort of exploring what more emotional connection might be there, and that was very much accidental and unexpected, yeah. and re really that's some of the best uh, connections I have had in this lifestyle have been the surprising and random. Like like the one who I'm talking to right now, surprising and random connection. <laughs> you and me, my dear. I know. So being being open and being the best you, the best couple you can be, that people will gravitate to that. And I want to put a plug to OK Cupid because they are really, really trying to be supportive of poly dating. They're they're a little uh, hinky here and there, but they're really working on it. And so it is a really excellent place to meet other people who are in poly relationships who might be interested in going out as a foursome. It's not the typical poly thing. It's far more swingery. So you may be looking for what we occasionally call progressive swinging, <laughs> which is a, a more long-term relationship with swing partners. So I would say your best bet is to just be open to experiencing whatever uh, you are handed. 
and be willing to see where things go. Jin, we're going to take another commercial and we'll come Let's- back and we'll do more listener questions on Life on the Swings at the podcast. We all come to a point in our lives when we finally ask the ever-looming question, is this all there is? And most of us coast along afterwards, just accepting that the answer to that question is probably, yeah, this is it. Sometimes, though, we're lucky. Sometimes we run into the right people at the right time. The Young Couple at the Center of a Life Less Monogamous, the new novel by Cooper S. Beckett, are about to meet a couple of swingers, and this moment will change their lives. Cooper's first novel is already receiving acclaim, and you can pick it up today, direct from the author at alifelessmonogamous.com, as a signed paperback, DRM-free ebook, or audiobook, read by Cooper himself and me, Kat Stark. Use promo code SWINGSET at checkout to save 10%. You can also get Cooper's memoir, My Life on the Swing Set, Adventures in Swinging and Polyamory, as an ebook, signed paperback, or audiobook at mylifeontheswingset.com. Enjoy more Cooper today in book form. Life on the Swing Set has now spent four years gradually ramping up our presence at the greatest place on earth, Desire Resort and Spa. In Cancun, Mexico. The most wonderful part of Swingset's annual trip to paradise has been the diversity of those couples that have chosen to join us. We've had nudists, polyamorous quads, couples looking to explore, longtime swingers, exhibitionists, and those just curious. We also run the gamut on sheer variety of geekery. For our fifth year, we decided to pursue aggressive expansion and take the resort to ourselves in 2016. That's right, Swingset is doing a takeover. For the first time, Swingset will have the run of the resort to organize the theme nights we want to enjoy, to plan the activities without worrying about getting out of anybody's way, and to guarantee the most awesome group of people to ever pull up on this bit of beach on the Riviera Maya. We're already over 60% booked and getting down to the wire. Come with us and Char Travel this November 5th through 12th for this most amazing experience for a week we're calling Choose Your Own Adventure. We've sold out every year and only a deposit will hold a room. Go to ssdesire.com for more information. We'd love to have you join us in paradise. Welcome back to Life on the Swings at the Podcast. Jin and I are gangbanging the mailbag. We're two-banging it, but we're two-banging it with lots of dicks. Lots and lots. Lots lots. and lots of dicks. Lots of cocks. Yeah. So I've got the next question here. My wife and I are coming up on our 13th anniversary. We've had our ups and downs and are actually at the best place we've ever been emotionally and sexually. One of the challenges was infidelity on her part. And while it was a dark and painful time, it turned out to be what put our relationship in the right direction, and the communication has been better and better. During the aftermath of that episode, I had to explore my feelings about being unknowingly in a non-monogamous relationship. I came to the conclusion that the sex didn't bother me. In fact, it kind of turned me on. What bothered me was the cheating part. Recently, we had a friend of ours come out as Polly while we were all talking, I was surprised to find out how totally cool and knowledgeable my wife was about the subject. That evening, we actually got into discussing some very fun fantasies that we both had. Based on your experience, do you think that this could be doable? Do you have any feelings as to whether or not it might be the idea of it for her or if she may actually be in the same place that I am? My biggest fear would be to throw away everything we've worked on by appearing to be looking for something else, which would not be the case. For me, I think I have a healthy dose of the compersion bug and would totally enjoy her pleasure. So, I think we, we need to commend another instance of coming out ahead after infidelity. I know. Like, that is... Oh, gosh. I, I have so much to say about that because one of the things that we... I mean, I'll digress briefly here. I was just thinking, Coop, about how long we've been doing this and that we've been trend watching for a long time around ethical non-monogamy and open relationships. And 
there are a lot of folks in the the couples work field, in the sexology field, who are really about reframing infidelity and why people cheat. Because we live in a culture that demonizes cheating in the sense that, you know, you do it and you're just a dog or you're just, you know, there, you can't come back from that is right. the myth. And way back when, when we had Christopher Ryan on the show and he talked about his book, Sex at Dawn, it really gave us a glimpse years ago into what was really one of the first recent questioning works out there around are we monogamous by nature or not? And certainly we can go to the space of, no, of course we're not because we're all animals. Well, sure. Okay. But we pick and choose how we behave and we pick and choose how we relate and how we partner. And we're not just animals. So we have more faculties on board than, you know, emotional faculties on board that are, are, at our disposal. So with all of that being said, I find it interesting that before when we've been doing, we've been gang banging the mailbag a long time to have this many listeners reach out and put it out there to say, you know, we found this path because we we were put in the position of examining our relationship after infidelity and then reinventing or creating through relationship design. We want our relationship to work this way, that we're here, we're committed to one another. And this is what commitment looks like even after betrayal, even after infidelity. And I just, I find that to be such, you know, again, a testament to two human beings or however many are in the relationship committing to one another to say, we'll just figure this out that, that love and connection is bigger than, than, you know, wanting to have variety or feel alive or feel sexually alive again. And with all that being said, I, I don't ever remember hearing about that some years ago that people coming back from infidelity as a viable entree into being ethically and non-monogamous. And here we are hearing it over and over again and reading articles about it and having it be in the mainstream in a way that then is a model for other people who are in that dark place yeah. to, to examine what they want to do with their relationship moving forward, that it's not a complete nuclear option. And I, I think that's fantastic because what it says to me is just like our listeners who are sending the, us these messages, that it means that an awesome relationship can continue. Yes. After transgressions, as, after, um, these experiences that, that are hurtful, it, it but you can bring it back. You can bring it back. And I, I think that's modeling some really health, healthy, awesome um, relationship skills that I hope folks can take away. Absolutely. It's very, it's very good that you're examining this. And I mm-hmm. think the really the overarching uh, answer to all of our questions is communication. And, and then really that's almost the overarching answer to all of our questions in general. Yes. Communication. And not being afraid to say how you really feel and giving your partner the permission to say how they really feel without fear of reprisals from you. And that's something I think that we all need to constantly be working on. If we're afraid to tell our partner something, it's because we're afraid of how they'll react to it, which often is because of how they've reacted in the past. And we need to recognize that they may think the same thing about us. And if we're both afraid in a relationship of telling the other person something for fear of what they might do, the only way to get past that is to demonstrate compassion and acceptance and love and um and treat your partner the way you want to be treated jesus fucking christ i'm full of cliches tonight (laughs) good lord i love it it's well it's it's 
all true. So let's make <laughs> sure that is an important piece of that. I, I Coop, there's a piece of this that I find interesting that mm. one of the things that I think about when I think about folks who've who have moved through in a in a successful way have moved through to reconciliation of a relationship after infidelity. I think to myself, my gosh, that's an amazing strength. Like, sure, take that out for a spin. Being intentionally poly or intentionally open or intentionally ethically non-monogamous, whatever label you want to put to it, is vastly different from infidelity. It's, it's, it's not two sides of the same coin. It is, it is a very different phenomenon. And it feels completely different because it's all consent based. It's all focused on relationship design and getting exactly what you want in your relationship. And so to this listener, I would say, you know, the listener asks, do you think this could be doable? Absolutely. I mean, you've, you've been through the ringer together. And if you found a place that's the best place you've ever been emotionally and sexually, then it's just a matter of having those conversations that we talk about again in a lot of those newbie episodes or one-on-one episodes that, you know, it brings me back to the get out of jail free card or the, you know, if this goes poorly and maybe you sit down with your friend who came out as Polly and you say, okay, we're going to sit around the three of us and we're going to have our tea or we're going to have our wine and we're going to have this conversation that is wide open of all the possibilities and say, okay, what happens if this goes poorly? What happens if I feel jealous? What happens if we have feelings for one another in uneven ways? What happens if we want this to end someday, but still want to be friends? I mean, you name it. And I just go back to, you've already been through a ton and you've made it work. So I, f- I want it to feel doable that you can have this conversation. That doesn't mean you're going to do anything about it, but at least broach the conversation with one another and then maybe even bring your friend into it and say, Hey, there's potential here. There's potential awesomeness and there's, there are potential pitfalls. And if we can make a plan, if we can be as prepared as possible, if we're all going to jump together into this circumstance, then then at least we have the commitment to one another that we're going to honor each other and treat each other with respect and caring and and see what happens. And so, you know, ultimately, I feel like what you've already been through is an incredible strength. And so if you want to take that out for a spin, taking it out for a spin into ethical non-monogamy is no more of a stretch than what you've already been through to repair your relationship. Well said, Jen. Oh, thank you. Well said. So before we wrap up tonight, I wanted to say some stuff. Dylan had a had an episode um, a couple episodes back where he talked about what's been going on in his life. And um, as I said up at the top of the show, we've all experienced some pretty big turnover, not turnover. We've all experienced some pretty big stuff in our life recently. And I wanted to reach out to our listeners and say thank you because um, about a month ago, I had a pretty significant emotional crisis. And unfortunately, uh, it has not completely passed, but it is better. And that crisis led down to pretty decent meltdown. And the curse of being so socially visible is that it's hard not to be very visible in your worst moments. And um, very concerned that I would simply pull the plug on Swing Set altogether, uh, which I have not done since year two. I reached out and asked for help from the Swing Setters, the, the listeners, to tell me what Swing Set has meant to them. And I really can't 
even begin to explain how amazing the outpouring of support and affirmation from you all listeners was. I, I got tweet after tweet and these just unbelievable emails um, talking about what Swing Set has meant to you, to your relationship. And I, I mean, I can't help but think about there was a time when I really felt lost and uh, this lifestyle helped me feel found and knowing that I contribute to helping you feel found. Um, it's, it's, it's a big thing. And so from your reaching out and thanks, you listeners helped me feel found again here. And while things are shaky, at the moment, um, I'm not abandoning swing set. It is too great for that. And we may go through some times when it doesn't quite look like what swing set looked like over the last six years. Uh, and Dylan may host some more episodes or ginger may host some more episodes, but Swing Set has always been greater than the sum of its individual parts. Um, and because included in that summation are all of you, the listeners and the readers. And that's what makes Swing Set so valuable. And that's why with Dylan off, um, not actually hunting mastodons, but instead building this community that we can all hang out in, there's so much value here for us who, who's, you know, talk into microphones and it's, um, truly awe inspiring and humbling to do this. Um, so, uh, that's just, just thank you on that. If I might add Coop, one of the pieces, one of the pieces of this that I hope the swing setters, I hope you all can hear in our voices and recognize in the work that we do that, we do pour ourselves into this. This is not um, a sanitized version of us. This is not no. covered with a veneer. <laughs> we we don't is... just toss this off after work, you know. Like, this exactly, is... exactly. We're we're up till all hours of the night. We're in discussions with one another on a regular basis, hemming and hawing and gnashing our teeth and poking at each other and, and doing the best that we can to be generous and, and loving to one another. But at the same time, we've been together for six years. <laughs> and as we've been together for six years, we've learned each other and watched each other grow. And also it, it gets to be a lot and mm -hmm. it's a lot in a good way. But I hope that you all recognize that as we move through these transitions and transformations, as Coop said, swing sets bigger than we can ever wrap our minds and hearts around. And as we move and shift and change and create new incredible things like Dylan is doing and Coop is always doing, we're going to be here. And those those emotional hiccups, those moments where things get real really fast and life is real underneath it all, um, swing set is definitely something that, that we are certainly committed to continue creating and continue to reinvent and make awesome for all of you. I love you, Ginger. I love you, Coop. So we got a review on iTunes. 
And uh, we will ask that you send us, re- that you review us on iTunes or whatever platform you use for your podcast, because that helps us. And if you'd like to contribute to the What Swing Set Means to You, send us an email or send us a tweet at SS Podcast. Email us at contact at lifeontheswingset.com and tell us what it meant to you, because it is, it's a lot. And hearing that makes it all worthwhile, legitimately. So on to the review. I've been listening to this fantastic podcast for quite some time now. It's like I took four of my close, open-minded friends, crammed them into my tiny Prius, and now get to listen to their amazing sex-positive discussions while I drive around for work. I've had plenty of my own ooh moments while listening, and I've learned so much over the years. Because we're all friends here, I can admit that I often join the discussion from behind the wheel, and now I've turned my newest partner onto this fun group. I look forward to more thought-provoking discussions. Thank you so much. So, Jin, thanks for uh, sitting down and doing this low-key mailbag with me. It's fun. You want to do this again next week? I do. I okay, absolutely let's, do. Let's do that because yep. Dylan Dylan is tracking the mastodons. I hope he catches I, one. I I agree with that, and at the same time, I have this visual of him somehow, some way, somewhere <laughs> in some sweaty disco somewhere, dancing <laughs> hardcore, shirtless to some serious dubstep. In a country to be named later. That's what so I picture right now. You, th- you think he's doing that and he just told me he's hunting the Mastodon? Yeah. Oh, that, that wouldn't surprise me, actually. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I, that's, and, th- and maybe that's just my own fantasies. I'm curious what our listeners think Dylan is doing on his hiatus. Oh, I like that. So listeners, what is it that Dylan is doing on his hiatus? Hashtag <laughs> SS hiatus. <laughs> While you're doing that, you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the swing set. Check out this podcast, daily blogs, articles, and toy reviews on our website at life on the swing set.com and on our site's Twitter feed at on the swing set. Email us at contact at life on the swing set.com with questions for future mailbag episodes voicemails get priority as always 573 swing that's 573-557-9464 don't forget to buy your condoms from the lucky bloke at swingsetcondoms.com you can visit our patreon page to throw us a buck or ten every time we release an episode at lifeontheswingset.com slash support and that is your gateway into the beta of the swing set community online community so please please join us there because it's amazing and we have a very surly robot named servo who um who likes to correct us when we use the term (laughs) guys he's very surly and you can find our other great podcasts like the gentle pervert social club intellectual foreplay sex at a go-go tell me something good the don't panic podcast and our two brand new podcasts that have migrated over to our system, Multi Amory and Our Better Half at swingset.fm. Android users, I'm very excited to say that hopefully by the time Google notices we're back, have not already removed us. For the moment anyway, the app is back. <laughs> so head to swingset.fm slash app and download it for free. You can download and listen to all of our podcasts from one app for free. Do it now, because who knows how long it'll last. Well, I'll tell you what, given the fact that we have acquired two new podcasts and the app is reinstated, the state (laughs) of the union is strong. (laughs) Yes. Make Swing Set great again. (laughs) Finally, you can buy my novel about swinging a lifeless monogamous at a lifelessmonogamous.com or my memoir, My Life on the Swing Set, Adventures in Swinging and Polyamory, at mylifeontheswingset.com. Both are available as an ebook, paperback, or audiobook, and if you buy them through my websites, use promo code SWINGSET to save 10%. 
Thanks for swinging by. Have a sexy business? Love the swing set? Let's put these two great things together. The Swing Set Network has advertising and sponsorship packages available for our websites and podcasts. Email advertising at lifeontheswingset.com for more information. Thanks. Hi, I'm Andre Shakti. I'm a professional slut from the San Francisco Bay Area, and you're listening to 